So we're gonna rank the pets. All right, we're gonna rank pets. This is for Vanilla WoW. I am doing this based on uh, what is, you know, best. What is bis? What is min maxi? I'm not doing this for memes. If you are someone who likes pets because of the feel, because of the aesthetic, this isn't necessarily for you. Um, but maybe you do want to know what pets are actually best. But yeah, we're gonna jump right into this. Uh, we're gonna do this in alphabetical order, which I think is great, because then we end with wolves. So we'll get there at the very, very end. But, so we're gonna start, this is only S through D, there's no F tier. Um, I didn't need an F tier, because D tier is dumb enough. So, we're gonna start with bats. For anyone who doesn't know, here are the stats on bats, right? Um, bats are really good. Bats are great. They have bite, screech, dive. Uh, they have a high damage modifier. They are a great pet for leveling. They are a great pet for dungeons. They are a great pet for raids. Bats are S tier. Easy S tier. Get a bat, have a bat, love a bat. Batman. A fantastic superhero. Bats, fantastic pet. Easy. Easy S tier. All right. Now, bears. Now, a lot of people come into my chat and they ask me about bears, right? They ask me what I think of bears. Um, I think it's because there's too many people who like or who like consider the bear aesthetic to be super important. Um, bears have a negative damage modifier. They've got some extra armor. They've got some extra health. They can learn bite and claw. Um, they have no dash ability whatsoever. So basically... What are, bet what are bears good for? Uh, the answer is essentially nothing. Um, their saving grace is that they have bite and claw. That's the only reason they're not D tier. Bears are shit. All right, they're not a good pet. Uh, there's way better pets out there for leveling. There's way better pets out there for dungeons and for raids. Uh, they're trash, but they at least can learn bite and claw. That's their only saving grace. All right, boars. Boars are another defensive pet. Super high armor, higher health, super, like, a negative damage modifier. I think this is the lowest damage any pet can potentially have. Um, but the one thing that boars have going for them, well, I guess the things that boars have going for them is that they have boar charge, which it does insane threat as an opener. Um, they can also learn bite and dash, which means their movement is good, even when they don't have charge up. Um, bite is an extra focus dump for them. They are very defensive, but they are able to generate high threat. So they are good for leveling, uh, up until you run out of boar charge ranks, right? I talk about this on stream a decent amount. Charge rank one, you can get boars on both sides, horde and alliance. Charge rank two, uh, is only on alliance side. Westfall, Lachmadon, Westfall. Charge rank three... You can get an RFK or from Belly Grub, which is Alliance side. And then there's no charge rank four whatsoever in the game. And then you get charge rank five once you get into Blasted Lands. So boars are a good leveling pet, but as soon as they run out of boar charges, they're bad and they're just not even really an option on Horde, right? So they're definitely better than a bear but because you can't really get boar charge ranks on horde side, that means they're only an alliance pet and they're only really good up until like, you know, late twenties, early thirties. The boars are gonna be a B tier pet. Uh, you can snag them on alliance, but as soon as you get up into uh, the late twenties, early thirties, you probably wanna ditch them for something else. There's your boars. Carrion birds, B for boar, uh, obviously. Carrion birds. Carrion birds. You don't see a lot of people with carrion birds. I think this is one of the sleeper ones for sure. Um, they don't have any changes to their damage modifier. They have slightly more armor, and then they've got a neutral health modifier. Carrion birds can learn dive, screech, claw, and bite. Um, to me, these are an incredibly strong leveling pet. You can get them on both sides, both Horde and Alliance, even though the first rank of screech you can only get 
on Alliance side in Westfall. Um, but once you get up to the higher ranks, they're very good, very strong. They would be S tier if you had a reason to really use these in like dungeons and raids. But once you get up to that level, they're like their armor modifier, their health modifier doesn't really matter all that much. Um, you want them to have the higher damage modifier in dungeons and raids. So for that reason, Marion Birds are going to be A tier. They're a fantastic leveling pet. But once you get to in-game content, they're not all that great. So A tier there. Look at this balance that we've already got. Now cats. I mean, I can go through cats. Cats are S tier. This is like the easiest one. Um, highest damage modifier. They have bite. They have claw. They have dash. Um, prowl is an interesting one that you can utilize as well. Um, Broken Tooth is the best pet for PvP for raid damage for dungeon damage. It is a cat. Um, after Broken Tooth, it's like all other cats are the best. If you're just going for raw damage, both uh, in dungeons and raids and PvP, everything. Cats. Cats are like, I'll put them top, far top left. Cats are the best pet. Um, they're good for leveling. The only downside to them for leveling is that they have less health and armor. But if you're spec Beast Mastery, that's fine. They're still going to carry. Um, that is, uh, yeah. So it might be that once you get the 1.0 speed bat from ZG, it's better than a 2.0 cat. But there's only like one 2.0 cat at level 60. Um, so on the, for the vast majority of the time, cats are the best. Cats are phenomenal. Okay. Then we get into crabs. Uh, I've seen one hunter use a crab pet that I can remember. Um, and it was very much for the fun of using a crab pet. Uh, crabs can learn claw and cower. Cower, let's just ignore because it's ridiculous. Um, so they basically have claw. Um, Prowl utility, yeah, yeah, yeah. So crabs are awful. Yeah, Eugene. Big shout outs to Eugene the crab. If it was just ranking Eugene the Crab, S tier, but it's not. It's ranking all crabs. Um, these pets serve essentially no purpose whatsoever. They are a D tier. Not even a C tier for the crab, D tier for the crab. Crabs are bad. Uh, crocolisks are very similar to crabs in that they have essentially one pet ability, which is bite. Um, their damage modifier, there's none to it. They have high armor, they have lower health. Uh, there's really no reason to have a crocodile. Every There's tons of pets that do everything that a crocodile does, but better, crocodile is also a D tier pet. Now gorillas, gorillas are an interesting one. Um, they do have some attack damage modifier. Um, so their, their modifiers are like halfway decent. Um, they can learn Bite, and then they can learn Thunder Stomp. For those of you who don't know, Thunder Stomp is a, it's an ability on a one minute cooldown. It's an AoE ability uh, that does like a significant amount of damage, but it's at once a minute. Um, it's a very niche pet. Uh, I'll say just because of their modifiers and the fact that they have Thunder Stomp, I'm gonna put them C tier. Otherwise, like if they didn't have Thunder Stomp, they would for sure be D tier. No problem, but they do have that like one niche thing that makes them better than crabs and crocolis and the like. Um, did Dan say in B tier for gorilla? I just like I doesn't. There's no situation where I feel like you would choose a gorilla over any S tier or even like an A tier pet. Like not realistically, doesn't make any sense. Now next we have hyenas. Hyenas. Uh, <laughs> the only modifier they have is armor, so they have slightly more. Ar they have more armor, but then damage is normal, health is normal. They can learn bite, and dash, and cower. Again, cower is worthless. Um, hyenas are. They're uh, they're not even the shitty carrion bird. They're just like they're just a bad cat, or not even a cat because they don't have claw. They're just a bad thing. Uh, they're a bad wolf, right? And we'll get to wolves later, but. There's no reason to ever use a hyena. They are actually D tier. They don't even have something like Thunder Stomp. Hyenas are a D tier pet. 
Now owls, owls are in all, uh, basically in all categories, the same as a bat. The difference between bat and owl is that bats learn bite and owls learn claw. Owl is still going to be an S tier pet because they are great for leveling because of screech. Um, they are great for dungeons because of screech. They're great for raids because of screech. They have a high damage modifier. Um, they have dive already. Like I said, screech, they have claw. Bats have bite. They're a great pet to have. Uh, every hunter essentially in hardcore right now is running either an owl or a bat and it's because of the defensive ability uh, or utility that Screech brings to the play. So, Owls are S tier. Would this be different for Hardcore? Mm, yes, probably. I mean, if you took Hardcore out of it, maybe you would drop Bats and Owls down to A tier. Um, but they still provide all that utility. It's just that people care more about um, the Screech debuff with Hardcore. And even with there being no debuff limit, that's an important thing to think about too. When in original classic, when there was the debuff limit on mobs and bosses, Screech was considered to be not worth it unless you were fighting a boss that did an insane amount of physical damage. Um, but even for that, like most guilds or a lot of guilds would bring in Screech pets for thing for bosses like Patchwork. So it was still utilized for that. It was very much more balancing out debuff slots. Now that there's no limit on debuff slots. Um, I think that they get a lot more use even out of non-hardcore raids. So that's why bats and owls maintain their S tiering. Raptors. God, I wish raptors had a had a dash ability. Um, raptors are essentially just a cat without dash, right? Um, if we go back over here, well, actually, they have a bit more survivability than a cat without dash. So cats have. Uh, a 0.98 health stat modifier, neutral armor, and then 10 damage. Raptors have 10 damage. Um, they have slightly less health, slightly more armor, um, but no dash. They're clever, but they're not good. Um, yeah, so they, they basically, like, they give up some health for armor, um, but they don't have that dash ability, which for me means that they are down here, B tier. You could even say they're like C tier because again, like you would just get a cat, right? Why are cats considered better if Raptor has similar stats? So cats have dash. So they're going to get into combat faster than a Raptor. Every single time they're going to get into combat faster. Um, Raptors also tend to have different attack speeds. I think they tend to have slightly higher attack speeds, which is kind of, which is just worse. Um, so, Raptor, I am actually going to... Oh, man, it sounds... It feels so bad, being who I am. Uh, but, yeah, I'm. they're, like, they're fine, but you would just never use a Raptor over a cat. There's just no point in doing it. So, Raptors are going to be down there in C tier. If you end up with one, it's better than a lot of other pets. But, well, I get one. Uh, next up, Scorpids. The one unique thing that Scorpids have is Scorpid Poison. Uh, it's not actually that big of a deal in Classic. I know that in TBC there's some stuff that you can do with Scorpid Poison because it does stack. Um, but in Classic, even with the no debuff limit, it's still lower DPS than a cat. Uh, so then you're essentially looking at a cat or a, a pet with a low damage modifier. Its other ability is Claw. Um, I'm going to put it in C tier, sort of like Gorillas, where it's got kind of a unique abil ability. Yeah, the Scorpid Poison can help with, um, like, you can poison rogues and druids with it. You can have it uh, protect your, yeah, your Viper Sting from getting uh, poison removal and stuff. It's got a, a niche ability, sort of like Gorillas. Um, so it's it'll be in C tier. Definitely has some utility to it. But not like these ones down here. Yo, Bunsen. Thank you, thank you. Oh, we'll get to wolves. We'll get to wolves. Spiders. Um, spiders. Oh, did I miss one? Whoops, I did that wrong. Corpids. Spiders are 
they're essentially they have the same damage modifier as a bat and an owl, but they don't have dash. They don't have a screech. They don't have anything. Uh, there's like no reason to ever get a spider. There's no extra utility to it. It's just worse than than getting a bat or an owl or a cat or a raptor. Spiders are going to be down here in the D tier. As a shitty raptor, that's saying something by instead of claw. Yeah, it's just bad. Um, it's too, it's unfortunate. If you go and watch my 1 to 60 journey, uh, I actually do use a spider for like six levels though, because I just didn't have the time and the energy to, to level something. So on that, like on my first dwarf hunter in SOM that I one shot, uh, I use a spider. So not, I'm not infallible. I make poor choices, but spider is a very bad idea. Uh, next we have tall striders. I know people love Mazranashi and people love the strider clutch mother. They're very beautiful birds. Um, but just because you have a beautiful bird doesn't mean it's going to help you in dire circumstances. If someone breaks into your house and you have a cool parakeet, I don't think that parakeet's going to do shit. And tall striders are also not really going to do anything. Um, it does have dash. It does have bite. But its modifiers are pretty dumb, pretty bad. Um, like, you would basically take any other pet with, like, dash or bite over this one. They, I mean, you could argue that they're slightly better than spiders, but even then, spider has an attack damage modifier. If you're going for purely looks, obviously, they are beautiful. They are gorgeous birds, but we're talking about min-maxing here. Down here on the D tier, there's no reason to ever get a tall strider whatsoever. They're they're uh, not a good pet. Next up, we have turtles. Turtles have are well, they're the only pet that has the shell shield ability. Um, there's only one rank of this. It reduces all damage taken by fifty percent. Um, it's a niche ability. Unfortunately, it's on a turtle. Uh, their other ability that they can learn is Bite. They have Ink tied with the lowest damage modifier in the game. They do have the highest of any modifiers you can get, though. Uh, most modifiers cap out at either like plus 10% or minus 10%, but they have plus 13% armor. Super crazy. Um, if they could generate any threat whatsoever, uh, they might be good. But they can't. Um, <laughs> they cannot generate threat because they don't do any damage. They are not useful while leveling. Not useful in dungeons or raid scenarios. They are, in my opinion, I mean, because of the shell shield, I would say that they're like niche. Yeah, you can use these like if you are doing or you're in a scenario where you want a pet to just be able to tank a shit ton of damage and no one's going to be DPSing that mob. Yeah, this is a pretty solid one to have. Um, but for the most part, like they're going to do everything worse than other pets are going to do. Would they be good for melee hunter? No, because if you're on a melee, it's sort of like the idea of, well, should you level a warrior prot, right? If you level a warrior as prot spec, you won't take as much damage, right? Oh, no. Can't see us if we don't move. This is correct, but you also take forever to kill anything, and your life is miserable. So that's what a turtle a pet is. Uh, it doesn't generate threat. It doesn't do damage. It makes your life miserable. But it does have shell shield. One redeeming quality. Silver lining. Shell shield. Shell shield. So they're going to be a C tier pet just for that one thing. Yo, know, what's up, Cindy? And then, okay, so Wind Serpents. Wind Serpents are a very unique pet. They are the only pet that has a ranged ability. Um, a ranged offensive ability, I should say. So Lightning Breath has a, let's see if it says here. I think it says, I think it's like a 20 to 25 yard range on this. They also have a pretty decent damage modifier. This is the same as Bats and Owls. Um, they can also learn bite. They can also learn dive. So they move really well. Wind Serpent is far and away the best pet for speed running 
anything. Um, if you're using your pet to pet pull stuff, Wind Serpent is going to be better than every other pet. So in that one aspect, they are the best. For leveling, um, they sort of fall flat because Lightning Breath is a 50 focus dump. So they end up not having enough focus to do really much of anything else if you have Lightning Breath going. So you you can run it, but it's really not worth it for a leveling pet. So Wind Serpents, I'm going to put A tier because they are... They're very unique in that they have a very niche role that they are the best at far and away. Um, but for leveling purposes, they're just they're going to be outshined by a lot of pets, by you know cats, bats, owls. Um, you could probably even throw in like a boar, boar being better than them, carrion birds probably better than them. But for speed running raids, because they can you can pet pull with lightning breath from range, and they have dash and everything, they're the best pet in that circumstance. That's why they're up here at A tier. They're not a bad pet to have, but they're definitely not the best one that you can have while leveling. I did not accidentally put boars under B. They're just the only B tier pet so far. Now, uh, wolves. This is the part in the video where I would say, where I would pull up like the wow head guide uh, that tells you like every hunter needs a wolf because they're the best pet in raids. Um, or the icy veins guide that says the same thing. What all, what, okay, let me just say this for once and maybe for all, probably not. We're gonna argue about this tomorrow. Furious Howl doesn't work. It doesn't work in classic. It's been broken since classic came out. When Furious Howl gets applied to people, uh, it's supposed to be extra damage on your next physical attack. What ends up happening is that this buff gets consumed by every yellow attack without actually adding any extra damage. So the only time this works is off a white attack, but it gets consumed by everything else. And it gets consumed by some stuff that doesn't even make sense, like Serpent Sting, like Hamstring, uh like gouge, like things that should not be consuming a physical attack damage modifier. So Furious Howl ends up being pretty trash, especially in a raid environment because everyone's using yellow abilities. Um, so then when you take that out of the equation and you look at the rest of their abilities, damage modifier, it's a 1.0, so it doesn't do any more damage. Uh, it actually does less damage than most pets. Um, and then it does have dash, it does have bite. If you're leveling, this pet doesn't bring any real utility to the table, right? This is going to be worse than a cat, a bat, an owl, a bird, a wind serpent, a boar. Um, it's just not going to provide anything in a, like, that's better than any of those pets. And it's probably going to be worse in some respects than some of the pets that are even farther down here. The one niche role that a wolf has is that that howl buff uh, generates threat. So if you are in a scenario like a hunter running Dire Mall Tribute runs, uh, if you body pull mobs as a hunter and then have your wolf cast Furious Howl, your wolf will pull threat off of any mobs that you body aggro. It's a very niche situation um, it's basically only if you're soloing dungeons where you're trying to skip mobs. That's kind of the only time that Furious Howl is, like, really shines, and that wolves really shine. There's no reason to use them while leveling. There's a ton of pets that are better. And then in Dungeons and Raids, because Furious Howl does not work the way that it's supposed to, they're not any better. You're going to actually have higher raid DPS by bringing a cat to a raid, a bat, an owl, uh, potentially even a wind serpent. Those, they're all probably going to do more, generate more raid DPS than a wolf will because Furious Howl's broken and outside of Furious Howl, their damage is pretty mediocre. So, I know a lot of people were hoping that I would put this up here because you're a bunch of wolf shills. Uh, or maybe people thought I'd put it way down at the bottom because it sounds like I hate wolves. But I'm going to put them somewhere 
I'm gonna put them B tier. Right here in the middle. Because the amount that they actually get used for Dire Mall Tributes is pretty substantial. Um, like, that's enough for them to, like, to warrant a B tier in my mind. For them to be used by Hunters throughout Classic, throughout Vanilla WoW, as this, like, go-to pet that's going to make Dire Mall Tribute runs more efficient, um, I'll give them B tier. Uh, but I would say, again, that they're worse in every other respect outside of that very niche thing of being able to like use furious howl to like pull mobs off of you um that's like the only thing that gets them up this high otherwise like if they don't have furious howl uh easy easy d tier um if furious howl works like it should then i think you would put them up um probably in a or s tier Right, because then you'd still be working with some issues of like getting that buff on as many rate like party members as you can. Um, so it would potentially be up here around S or A tier for sure if the buff worked, but the buff doesn't work is the problem. So this is going to be my final list. I feel pretty good about this. If anything, I'd put wolves down at C. Right? Like, they're lucky they're up here in B tier. You hear that, wolves? You're lucky that you're up here in B tier. 